Quinn from Fabricated Quilts. And I'm super excited to bring you into the restricted area. So I worked really hard this week to kind of get it picked up. It's not 100%, but I know a lot of people had some questions because you guys have been following the drama of the move for uh, quite a while. So here we go. I'm gonna grab the camera from Honey because that way you can hear me a little better. So here we'll open the door. And here we go. So I don't know how many people know, since most of the time you don't get to see my full setup, I do have a Koala Studio table and adore it, absolutely love it. This is my daylight lamp right here. So So Seti does sell one of the um, daylight lamps. I love it, the Duo. They are terrific, and that's one of the things that helps me give you the amazing light that helps us see everything that we want to see. So here's my camera setup. So a lot of people have asked over the last few months, you know, what does that camera look like? So a lot of times when I'm sewing, I'm, I'm back here, and I'm looking over the camera so that you guys can get that sewer's eye view. So that is my Sew Steady table. I could put it down um, in this cabinet, but a lot of times I have to switch it for different machines based on whatever I'm doing, based on you know who the shops are and things like that. I have several different machines. So I don't bother because it's just too much headache to, to do that. But So Steady does make amazing inserts that you could use if you had a set-in table and they have a lip. Um, if you don't have one, they have one that has a lip, so you don't have to have that. They can help you customize that and fit it exactly to how you want. This is my new thing. I do have a plug in the floor now, which I've never had before, so now there is no cords down here for me to trip over. It's going to go underneath there, and my ironing station is right here, and this is my piecing station right now. So this is a table that um, my family has had for years and years. My dad fixed the top of it so that I could use it. And you can see I'm using my so steady table and it's all leveled out right there so I can just piece to my heart's content and it's got its own little light right there. So here's my new addition to the sewing room. I've never had this before, but it's new. I got my Laura Star iron and I'm gonna have that set up pretty soon, but it's not quite ready yet. And then let me show you right here. This is the cutting and the workstation. All of my rulers are going to go on that pegboard back there. You see over there? That's going to be set up on the wall so they have really convenient use of being able to get all those tools for piecing. And this is going to be my massive design wall right here once we get it all set up. And then right here, these are projects, project boxes. And then the colored boxes are scrap. Um, mostly single tone colors if I need to grab that. If I have other stuff that is like fat quarter stuff, these are all sorted right here by color. So if I need multi-tonals or they're, you know, they're mostly at one color, but it, a lot of these have different mixed colors. So I've got those all in that cabinet. And God forbid I should show you this, right? Coulters don't have these, but I do. I have this amazing serger. So I just was using that recently to uh, edge stitch some stuff. And these are my windows. Look at how crazy and awesome these windows are. So this is the best time of the day in this room. The light is amazing. And then of course, this is my long arm. And I put this quilt, this is my fun and fancy demo quilt. And it's not quite finished because my long arm has been having some challenges and it's at the spa right now. So we also had to move it and get it re-leveled and everything else. So my friend is helping me take care of that. So, and a couple of, this is our so steady long arm rack right there. And with Donnell's awesome templates, which I've got to test out. And then, you know, books and stuff. This is my postal center when I'm shipping out stuff to you guys. And then this is my embroidery center right here, right? So that's Baby Lock, so love it. This is the Baby Lock Altair, does amazing ruler work. And of course, this is the thread wall right there. So sorted by color, sorted by style, very gated, cotton, wonderful, isocord, you name it, superior, it's all in there, love it. And then, 
would not be complete. So this is the quilter bathroom. Look at that awesome floor. I totally want to put some of those designs onto something. I'm going to steal those. So here, let me get the light. It's really, really pretty. Lots of great color. And then it does have a full shower. See, I, I've kept the quilting theme in the quilting room. All this, those are like Donna's tiles, right? Those beautiful Persian uh, arabesque tiles are just like Donna McCauley's templates that are so awesome. And then I do have a pretty organized sewing space in here. So everything that's hung up, those are quilts that are ready to be quilted. Oh my God, I better get to work, right? And then down here, these are all more projects that are kind of on the back burner. The ones on the table are like, get those done now. And then that's all my yardage and stuff like that. And you guys look at this. So cool, right? My batting rolls are no longer getting dirty and on the floor and everything else. And then of course, just some random crap up there. Okay, so that's the studio tour. Little fancy mirror, because I like fancy. I like pink and I like fancy. Okay, now let's get to work, right? Okay, all the crap's hidden under there, see? It's not that organized. I still got some more work to do. And my poor dead plant, he did not make the move very well. We're working on him. All right, so let's get sewing, right? All right, hang on while I get you snapped in. This machine's all ready. I got my fabric set up, I tested everything. All right, let's make sure we've got you nice and straight so you're not crooked. I don't want you dizzy. Okay. Yes, I am super lucky. Honey is amazing. He did not balk at a giant sewing room. <laughs> After That's my 30th anniversary wedding gift and hopefully the uh, home of a lifetime. So, okay. Let me show you what we're doing here. I got two pieces that I want to share. And we're starting this week with the classic clamshell, classic. What that means is they're half circles. And so I wanna give you a little bit of content about that as we talk. Let me go ahead and set up my microphone too so I can make sure you guys have really great sound. So I'm gonna clip it on and you guys let me know if it's working well. How's that? Can you hear me really good? So I can't walk around with it because I might fall and kill myself, but hopefully that'll give you some great sound even if my head is turned away or whatever because it's right by my mouth. Now, let's get some um, colored paper so we can show you what we're doing. Lots of you guys recognize this, right? Everybody's, many, many people have seen that. This is the clamshell, the classic half circle clamshell, and this one comes in the sampler set, right? However, this is called CC2, classic clamshell number two. If I bought just this template, it would have a lot more clamshells. It would have several, I don't know how many. I already have this, so I haven't bought the other one because I already have this one, right? This is the partner, and these are both half of the template. Like if you just bought CC1, which this one is, then you would get a lot more of them. It'd be longer. But I like this size, and this one comes in the clamshell collection, right? And so this is the two inch right here, and this is a one and a half inch right here on this one. This is a three inch base. You guys already know that because we've done a lot with this one. And then this one is the one inch base. Anytime that you have a circle clamshell that is a half circle, that's a true circle, the way that you think about it is the base right here, whatever size that is, the height is going to be half, half of that. So if I sew this shape right here, it's gonna be a three inch wide from here to here and it's gonna be one and a half inches tall from this center line. So I'm gonna pick it up a little bit more because I want you to see some of the alignment that we're gonna be using. So let's get you a little closer. This line right there, your foot is going to sink down into that space and your needle will align 
right there. And that's the same with all of them. So this is the line that you are working with. When your foot sinks in there, your needle lines up right there. And that same line is gonna be really important for lining it up as we go to each next clamshell, right? So what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna show you a small piece of how to travel, because I have my own little special way to do it that I think is much easier. It makes you the ruler do all the work so that you don't have to guess, you don't have to worry. It's just gonna take you where you wanna go. Let me just straighten that out, there you go. All right, so we need a reference line. If you're sewing on a project and you're in a border, this can be a seam line. You don't have to mark something if you already have something, it's okay. So let's just put our foot right in the corner right there. I know that this is a six inch box, give or take, because I made it with a six inch square. But you know, always when we use any kind of marking tool, it might be a little bigger or a little smaller depending on what we mark. So we'll see how we do. So the center line that I told you about, this line that goes right along the base, that is your base measurement. And it's gonna be lined right up on this reference line. When I'm holding the clamshell, hold it into the clam. No holding down here. If you need two hands, you can even use two hands. You can kind of use this to get you up and hold with both hands. Let's get in a little closer. I think we're too far away. We need some more good visuals. Okay, I think that's gonna be better for us. All right, let's sew. Start your gas first, right? It's okay if you stitch one stitch in place. Keep those fingers up in the clamshell so that you're touching really, really well. As you come down, hug, hug, hug the mountain. What I've observed is I think it's easy to go up, but when we start going down, it's really easy to drift off into Never Never Land. I call it the gravity pull. It just pulls you over. We concentrated on holding this one. Now we're gonna sew this one, so we don't care about that one anymore. We're just gonna line this up on the line and now we'll hold this one to get us into the next one. So right now, hug, hug, hug. As we come down, really concentrate on keeping that foot touching all the way down. Now I'm at the bottom. I have two options. I can travel up this line, which I hate to do because I don't know exactly where I need to be. Sometimes I don't go far enough, sometimes I go too far, I stitch back, it's really messy, I have to get a straight edge, I hate it. I'm gonna keep this in position and hold everything just how it is right now, and I'm gonna stitch right up to the center. So right now, I'm going to look and be really cognizant of getting to the center line right here. So let me turn it a little so you can see what I'm trying to look for. I'm trying to get the needle aligned right in this center line so that these are in a, in a line. Now, once I've done that, they were lined right up in the middle. I can put this up and I wanna show you. I know that it's the center because look at where I'm lined up right here. This center line goes right in the middle of these two clamshells. So our offset is perfect. Right, and then let's turn it just a little bit and I'm gonna show you one more thing. This center line, this position line that we've told you about, all of the clamshells that we have already made now are lined up on this line. So as we make more, we're going to be checking that everything is lined up on this center line to keep us in order. If you have a specific reference line that you're trying to follow, like if this is a squared edge on a quilt, a seam, you can massage a little bit to get that lined up. Now, let's just really quickly recap. So we sewed back up. If I just started going this way, I would have a big gap right here. First, before I go that way, I've got to finish this one piece. That's the one problem with this method, is you're gonna get a little alternating double stitch on this first one each time, right here. 
So we'll touch our boundary and we'll come back to the center. Now I like this, I think this is cleaner than me trying to sew up and guess where I need to go. This gives me the exact height that I need so I don't have to do any guessing. I've stitched right on the ruler, it's really clean, but there is double stitching there. All right, so let's flip it and we'll show you where we're gonna go next. So now we're right at the top. We can literally just put that right in there. We're gonna line this center line up so that we're touching and we'll massage to make sure that this center line is lined up right on the center so that our offset is perfect. If you need to do a little crunchy, a little smushy, it's okay, do it. So here's that two hand. If I put my hand right here, you might not be able to see as well, but I can use two hands to help manipulate that. This two hand method is gonna be really, really helpful if you have a heavier piece that you're working on. You can use two hands to get everything that you need out of this one. So I need one more stitch, I think, in order to touch the top of this clamshell. So right now, my stitch is pretty much right at the top. One of the things I like to, to tell people when you're stitching a clamshell, this right here, this is what I call the, the awareness zone or the danger zone. If I'm sewing, let me just get a little piece of chalk here. If I sewed and I did this and I came down just a little bit and then I came up, right here, this is ridiculously visible. There's something in our brain that knows that this classic design is touching the top, but not going into this space. So if you stitch below this line, everybody will see it. Your eye just jumps right to it. It's so visible. If I were to sew in and I barely touched it and there was actually like a pink gap between this yellow thread, not a big gap, but one or two stitches, and then I stitched out, nobody will see it. Your eye will fill that in. It knows that this should be touching and it won't pick up that that, that stitch is a stitch short. So for this design, better a stitch short than a stitch over. That's just an important little technical thing that if you can watch out for that, that will make your design cleaner. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll line ourselves up. We've got this boundary here and we're lined right up on the line. That is keeping our clamshells nice and square. And we just wanna put this last piece in. So I'm activating my stable tape right there with my thumb right here. Now, when we did this last one, oh, sorry guys, I'm bumping you. Oh, okay, so right now we're at the top. So do you remember that when we were over here, we had to stitch back up to the top and then we were ready to go to the next one? Well, because we are already at the top, we only have to shift the ruler. We don't have to sew anywhere to get in position. We're just going to put the hook around the foot and then we'll line up the tops. Right there, this line is lined up right there with the stitching. This line is lined up right with the stitching. So that's gonna help us get ourselves right along. So get your fingers up in there and let's sew. Okay, just touching, switching my hand and getting my alignment double checked so that I'm right where I need to be so I can close my design. So depending on how many spaces that you have, you might have to alternate coming back up to the top. Every other line is going to give you that transition. So here we're lined back up with the center again, and we have to complete this one side right here. So we'll do that first. And we'll come back. I use the ruler for that travel. It's really nice and clean. It's gonna keep me aligned beautifully. And you can see as we're working with this, I'm sewing from both sides, right? So I'm, I have the ruler on this side or on this side, but if I'm using that two-handed method, 
then that can be a way that I can really control what's happening on either side. So this center line is aligned right in the middle of these two clamshells right there. If it's not, I can do a little adjustment, get myself right where I need to, a little smushing, and see I can even use my finger here and then make a little adjustment as I go. So we'll touch there and then smush a little to get our last little piece. Okay, so we've just done a really, really small bit. Let me see, I see some questions that I wanna... I know why my template moved. Oh, good, Dolly, yay! So Dolly was saying that when she's holding it, it's moving around. And the key to that is only holding the one where you're sewing and hold it up close. If we're holding it kind of far away, like down here, that isn't enough support where the foot is touching. You really need that support right close to where your foot is. That's what's giving you the control right there. So I'm glad to know that that was helpful information. Um, let's see. I got you guys. You guys are all helping me. You're answering questions of each other, which is so awesome. Oh, we'll come back later. If you, you know, I always broadcast um, Sundays at three o'clock. Um, if I ever am not broadcasting, we try to have a notification. But for right now, now we're back into reality. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at some of your questions. Is there a reason, let's see what this question says, Lillian. I can't read it because my bar is in front of it. Yes, okay, so Lillian, did, you, did your question get answered? So Lillian's question was, why did I stitch back up to the center? So right here, for example, when we stitch on the bottom, I would have to sew up to here to start this offset. But this is an unknown quantity. I don't know exactly how far. I could measure it and mark it, but that's a lot of work. By just sewing back up to the center here, I'm exactly positioned at the right height for the next row. And then I just fill this in, and then I would sew, sew this way. And what that does is it leaves this part of the boundary very clean. There's not any like, oh, did I go far enough? Oh, I went too far. Oh, come back. Oh, double stitch. Oh, mess, mess. And this way I can ditch around this when I'm finished just one time. And then it's super clean and the design's gonna look amazing. So that's something that, that I want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some fun variations. We're gonna use, that was CC2H. So CC2H is a short, clamshell. So if you bought CC2, it would look just like this, only there would be more of it. So you don't have to reposition as many times. So let's talk about that one more time. We're going to just show you one more piece of that. Are there different rulers that we can use to accomplish the same goal? Yes, lots of them. Can I use a circle? Of course. This is a circle. You're just going to use half of it and you would just use the center circle line and you can sew it just like that and line it up just like that. Can I use this mini multi-arc? Let's put something behind this. Yes, you can. Absolutely, 100%. This is going to work amazing. Why would I want to buy a clamshell ruler if I have this? If I love clamshells, and I want to sew them a lot, and I want to use them as a large volume fill, what would happen with this ruler is I would sew one clamshell, and I'd have to move it and reposition, and I'd have to sew another one and move it and reposition, and sew it and reposition every time. If I want to get done quickly, it's worth perhaps getting the longer clamshell that has like four or five of these in a row, so that you can position it one time on the reference line and just so, 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 so. So it just really depends on what you wanna do. How, how important is your clamshell? If you're just using it occasionally, maybe it's not that important and you can just use this and be happy with it. But I like the different sizes. I really like the flexibility of the longer ones. 
I'm going to share the CC1 right now and show you some an, a different option of how you could use it. And then we'll show some other embellishments after that. Okay, so this is a two inch clamshell for CC1 and one and a half, right? So this size, this will sew a two inch base and this will show a one and a half inch base. And both of those will fit in my six inch square. So let's see if we, oh, your, your comments are flying by. So I'm just gonna kind of scoot down so I can see if I'm missing anything. I'm not seeing freezing. Try refreshing your screen if you can. Um, how would you handle if the space didn't come out even? Mary Gallagher, that's a really great question and I'm gonna address that a little bit later and I'm gonna show you an idea for how you can control for that. Uh, East Texas, Western Australia. I love that we have people from all over. Just, just reminds me that we can all, we're all human, we can all share some stuff and all be together. And Bernadette, I got your note and I will respond to you, um, but I'm not, I'm not doing Zoom right now, maybe later. So, okay, let's go ahead and start. I'll just tack this off so we can move down to the next position. I do like to go ahead and do micro tacking and then pick up my thread. I don't like my bobbin to be on the bottom. I always want to cut that, always want to control for that so that I don't sew through it. So just like that, I put my needle down and up and I was able to then pull that and pick that bobbin thread up. The bobbin thread will actually retract and then I can just cut these top threads after I stitch those micro stitches. That'll keep that secure so nothing will um, come out. Okay, so let's start right here. We'll start with this one. So we're gonna do just a little fun craziness on this one, so bear with me here. I kind of have a picture of it. So we're gonna use this side first, the big side, and that should fit this space pretty well. We'll use the same technique that we just talked about, but I'm gonna hold up in here. So I, I kind of have enough room for one finger on each one. So start your gas and then move. I think it's always harder to sort of come out of the ditch of the clamshell right here. So that's why I can use those two hands. So not only am I gonna pull with this hand to bring the fabric that way, I'm gonna push here too. And that gives a little bit of a smoother stitch as we come up out of that ditch right there. It really helps control for that so that I can get a really pretty stitch right off the bat. So then get this lined up. We're, we're in the same position that we were before, right? We wanna go on the bottom. Do we wanna go on the bottom? Not this time. So let me show you what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna move up a little bit. And I think I'll use a straight edge. I think it's gonna look better if we do. You can decide. If you wanna freehand it, you can. It's up to you. So we're a little bit far away from the box. We didn't smush very good, but I'm just gonna move up. What, if, what is my stopping position? I want to look right here and have my foot touching, right? So we told you that this is that two inch. And if I, if I put this on here, I can't really, oh, I think I did the wrong side. I did. Okay, let's see what we can do. We'll see if we can fudge it a little bit. Oh, that's okay. Let's just put another one in. So I'll show you. This is what would happen if we didn't do my technique right here where we go up to the middle. This is what it would look like right here. We'd have to guess, right? We have to be at the center and we have to get this line lined up. So we're not quite there. We'd have to go up a little more. Right? We want this center line to line up right with the bottom here and right there. So I, I guess I went a stitch too far, so I'd have to come back one stitch and touch. So you can see that's what, that what, what's wood, ugh, stumbling over my words right there. 
So this is what it would look like right here if we didn't use my method. You would get kind of this intermittent and it wouldn't be on every line, it would be every other one. So the next one would be open because it would be like this, right? So you'll have these lines intermittent. So I'm just gonna cut this because this was not what I was trying to show you. We're just gonna start again. I'll just make another line because I wanna show you something cool and I kind of flaked on it. So we'll just put a line in here. We'll just go with it from there. All right, see, everybody messes up. <laughs> I don't pretend that I don't, I do. <laughs> okay, so what I wanna do is use the smaller side first. So let's get that lined up and we'll get that stitched in. And here I'll show you, we'll start from the half. We can do that as well. We don't always have to start from the bottom. It's just up to you, it's personal preference. You can decide. All right, so we're right in the boundary. Get our stitch in there, we'll tack it, and here we go. When you sew a smaller clamshell, I think it's helpful to make sure that your needle is going a little bit faster. Because what can happen is you're having to change directions a lot more with the smaller one. And if you're sewing really slowly, I think it's harder to control. So a little bit more speed is useful. Like when you're doing the super tiniest clamshell, I'll show you these really tiny ones. Ooh, you've got to transition really fast. So it's okay to have just a tiny bit more speed when you're doing these really small ones because it's gonna make it easier. Otherwise the needle kind of traps you and doesn't allow you to move as effectively. So let's go ahead, let's finish this out, and then I'm gonna show you my little trick that I messed up on last time. All right, so we'll just get this half in here. And now I, what I wanna do is I'm gonna just move up. Okay, what I'm looking for is my foot to touch the clam right there. So hopefully you guys can see that. Let's see if we can make it bigger. Oh, there you go, can you see that? Right there, I'm touching, right there. Now, this is the one and a half inch, the smaller one right here, it's one and a half inch. This is the two inch circle on this side, right? So it's kind of big now. Let's, I'll get you back down to size. Let's see if we can pinch you and give us more, more of our screen, there we go. Well, if I line this up, let's see if I can turn it so you can see it better. If I line this up, on this existing stitch line right there, it's gonna match perfectly, right? Because this is already bigger in size. I can sew until my foot touches right here, and then I can put this right on the stitch line, and then I can echo it like this until my foot is touching. So on this one, let's see if we can do it from this side. I need to give you a little better view right there. Can you see that? So there's the sewing line, and this clamshell is lined right up on it. And I'll echo it over until my foot is touching, and then just reposition and sew it again. Right there, and then reposition this one and sew it here. So I love this. This is what you're gonna get. Okay, so. If I wanna stack these and do more, I've created this little echo right here, which I love, but now I want more clamshells. I don't wanna just echo, echo, echo. How do I line this up to get the next one? What we have to do is we want to line up this again in the offset, right? So if this is the middle, this part right here, we want this to line up right in the middle. So we, we may have to move up just a little bit and get it lined up. Let's see, we wanna be right lined up at the top. So we need one or two more. So remember we said that this is your needle alignment. So we want to touch right there when we do our clamshell, right? So we've gotta kind of shift it a little bit. Right there, I think that'll get us in. Okay, so now I can get myself in there. Okay, and now I can just line these up. 
I should line up right in the middle. If I need to smush a little bit, I can. I'm getting this center line right aligned with the top echo. And now I can just put this next one in. So touch. I'm looking in the, the foot, making sure that I've got the correct spacing. I have to adjust this last one. He looked a little short. Touch my boundary, and then I can come up. And we'll show you the echo one more time. I think you can see it maybe a little bit easier. Let's see if we can turn it just a little bit so you can get a little bit more of it. Yeah, I love this design. This one is really, really cute. And I think the hardest part was figuring out how to do the next clamshell, but it is a good variation and it's not that hard. It really just adds a little bit more drama because you end up with a little bit of a variety and it has that echo, which I think is nice because then you get like that little quilty puff. So we'll just echo that. And so the relationship is a half inch right now. So the one that I did before was one and a half inch and I'm echoing it with the two inch ruler. And that just is because of the spacing, you know, the ruler has that quarter inch space. Well, that's what we need right there. So doesn't that look so cute? And you could just keep stacking that. So again, here we should have the half clamshell right here that will go right in there. Let's see if we can put it in. I think we have to move up a little bit though to do it. So this one would be the half. So we definitely need to move up. So we'll get it aligned just so you can see the alignment. This line right where your needle reference is would have to be right on the center, right? Comes right into the middle. And then right after you do that first one and you get it aligned in the middle, you should be able to get all of the rest of them. So it looks like I need to smush just a little bit on that first one. Oh, he moved. All right, bonbon time. I'm just gonna pick my needle up, put him back where he should, get him right in position. I can take those stitches out later and I'm gonna micro tack it right in the existing stitch line. Okay, and then just get on there. So. Since this is a little off, I'm going to show you how to fix it if smushing is too much. Like you can smush a little bit, but maybe that's too much to smush. And that's why the needle kind of went awry. I have this all aligned on the top. If I sew to the top right here of the clamshell, I can make a microscopic adjustment right there to get me realigned. At the top is where you can make an adjustment that will be barely perceptible. If you try to adjust the position on the bottom, this will not have a pretty point. You're going to have a little rectangle right there as you creep over. But right now, I've corrected enough that this is already aligned and now I can sew. And I'll show you what it looks like. It basically adds a tiny flattening right to the top and most of the time you can't even tell that it is there. All right, so we'll just do the last one. So what would I do now if I'm gonna do this echo is I would just shift up until my foot is touching and then I would just echo from there. So you're just gonna flip it over and you're ready to echo right away. So we'll do that, we'll get the echo in and then we'll show you the flat. Let's turn it this way so you can see. Can you tell? Can you see it yet? Let's see, let's flip this up just a little bit. So the one that we adjusted, this was our little bobble right there. And this is the one that we adjusted right there. Can you even see it? Does it look weird to you at all? Doesn't to me, it looks good. So we'll finish the echo and then we'll pull it off and we'll show you and you can see. The echo itself will be a little bit of a self-correction because it is so smooth and so round. And once we put a little bit more activity in there, I think that'll de-emphasize any flattening even more. So we'll put the echo in there. Foot's touching. I'm adjusting the position of that two inch to echo that every time. And we just would keep doing that until we got 
to our boundary and we finished up. So let's tack off and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there's that bobbin thread, always pulling that up. After we tack off and we can just clip these threads and you'll see the bobbin will go away and then I can just trim those nice and close. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we got. Let's cut some of these so we can clean up our work area. I hate having all these threads hanging around. So I, inevitably, I sew through them. Okay, so let's see if we can find that little problem child. I'll bring it up close for you. Can you see it? So it's this one right here. You can't tell, can you? So if you notice that you're getting off, that is how you correct. You always correct at the top, you never correct at the bottom. And if one is off, it's probably gonna you know, successively be off. So as soon as you notice it, if it's too much to correct in the single arc, correct this one a little bit and correct this one a little bit and gradually you'll get yourself back to the correct state. And this is very different right here. And let's just put one more um, embellishment on here if we want to, we can do it. We'll just do it on one row so you can see that you have additional options, okay? All right, let's see. So this is one and a half right here. This echo is two. And the shape that we have right here is one right here. So we can add a pretty easy embellishment. This line right here is the middle of this shape, right? Because this is where we started on the half. So we can put this right in the middle. We'll pick up our thread. Oh, I think I need to come in just a stitch or two more. Right there. Otherwise, he's going to be way on the outside like a crazy person. All right, so let's get our needle set. Okay, so that's our start point. We'll line this up, and he's right on the reference line, right in the middle. And on the first row, there's nothing on the bottom, right? So we're just going to scoot across. And notice that the foot is touching right here, so as we scoot across, what we're gonna look for is the back of the foot also to be touching right there, because that is the correct spacing. Then we can line this up, and we probably need, I think we need one more stitch. We're not quite there. There we go. So we want this line to be lined up. That's gonna give us the middle right there. This should be right in the middle. Oh, he's, I, I should have trusted. Okay, that's okay. We'll, we'll do better next time. Put it right in the middle. Get it lined up right in the middle. And then the foot is a half inch, right? That's how big the foot is. So we're trying to echo that half inch. So we'll sew across. Get lined up. Get this line right in the middle there. And then we'll come across. So on the bottom, I think it's a little more tricky um, on the bottom than it will be for the other ones. The other ones it should be a little easier because the lines are a little more visible once we're in the body. But let me just show you what it looks like so far. Pretty fun, huh? Right? So we're just giving it a little more definition. So you can play with the sizes as you go and decide, you know, what do you want to do? So let's come up to the next row and I'll show you how to line up once you're in the body of the quilt. So this is that center line, right? And we want to put this right there so that we can get lined up with the top of this, right? So we have to maybe sew in a little bit in order to do it. Then we can stick him right in there. I think I went one stitch too far, there we go get them lined up, and then we can start sewing that. We want the same alignment like we did before. Okay, 
So this is, this is what we're getting. He's touching my ear. We got a little double stitching. So here's the tricky part. If you're wanting to try this, you're gonna have to stitch over a little bit. Get yourself touching, and then you'll line it up again. Now we have the center position right here. See this? We can line it up right in the middle, and now we can do that a little bit more easily, I think, to get the next one in. I think the bottom one is harder. I think this one's a little easier. Okay, so the, the challenge for this part is, if you wanna do this, you're gonna have to maybe freehand across a little bit to get yourself to the next one. So you're gonna have a little bit of extra stitching when you're doing this. But I love it, I think it looks amazing. Okay, so we'll get into that stitch line and we'll sew over. So what we're looking for right here, the foot's touching, we're right on the center line. This line is right in the middle of the offset and we'll be able to sew that and get that right in there. So then we'll just close it. Since we have double stitching on all the other ones, we'll do it on this one too. Doesn't that look awesome? Let's see if we can get you a better view. We'll get come out a little bit. Doesn't that look so cool, you guys? I get so excited. I do. I admit it. So this is, is it's not complicated, but it takes time. Okay, it's all about aligning the lines on the ruler. You've got the line and the offset line every time. So, you know, I know there are people out there who are like, that's way too complicated, I'm not gonna do that. It's okay, then just do the clamshell. You know, start, start at the basics. But if you want to embellish, we started at the beginning and we're adding some level of detail. This little echo, not so complicated and you've got the center lines to line it up each time. This one's definitely a little bit more complicated. And if you started with a bigger clamshell, like for example, the four inch, let me grab that from the multi-arc. Okay, if you're doing a big clamshell, then you can do you know, a four and a three and a two as your echo. So this, this would make it quilt up quite a bit faster because it's bigger. Right, so then you have options. This is a small size and this is pretty dense. But then if you have different sizes, you have different choices. All right, so let's go ahead and tag this off. I'm gonna show you two different things that we can do, two more options, and then let's see how we're doing for time today. Okay, four o'clock, we're doing fine. We have plenty of time. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap so you, you get the concept of where we were. The very first one we did was the CC2, which was this size, the three inch, and that's this one right here, it's really big. And this is the one that's in the sampler set and this is very classic. And all we did is we showed this method, the travel method that I love, that allows you to stack them easily with no messy stitching on the side. Okay, this is the classic. Super easy. Now, this one was CC1, and this is the one and a half inch, and then we did the echo with the two, and that's what this one looks like with no fill. And then we came back in and we showed you that travel method if you wanted to put another echo inside. So this is kind of like a Sashiko rainbow right here for this, and you can see that it really changes the density very quickly when you add another layer. So I'm going to answer Mary Gallagher's question now. Mary, if I wanted to make sure that my design was in the center, okay, what I would do is I would mark the center of the space and I would do the first line from the middle out to the end and I would tack it off. So we'll do that real quick just so you guys can see that. So because we are gonna come back to this and go the other direction, we're gonna go forward right now to the end of the boundary, and then we'll go out to the other side. Now you have options when we do this. You can do it two different ways. You can start 
with your foot up here in the center, like you could put this in the middle aligned on the center. Since we've already set our needle, we're gonna set it like this and we'll sew out to the boundary. Start your gas, two hands helping you. Only control the clamshell that you're stitching. Let your needle rest and adjust your hand position. Now, so I don't have to adjust twice, I'm just gonna adjust it now. Okay, so we'll go ahead, sew this one. and we'll sew into the boundary. Now notice I'm not at the top of the clamshell right here. This is a weird position, because this seam out here, if I needed it, you could even mark outside that if you needed to know where your center is, but for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack it off, okay? We'll go ahead and cut it and bring that bobbin thread up. Now this is a little bit more work, but this is about precision. This is about controlling the design to give you exactly what you want. If you don't care, then you just start at the end and you just sew to the other side and what you get is what you get. But what we're doing here is we are controlling the design. Now we didn't tack this off, right? We can um, tie these off with a self-threading needle if you want. If you wanna make this really clean, that's a good idea. So what you would do, this is my bunny ears. Bunny's hopping along, he's gonna attack that thread and flip him over and put him right through there. We'll make the little knot. So I'm just gonna hold on to the, the knot real quick. I'm not gonna tighten it up just yet. And I'm gonna take my self-threading needle, which has a little bit of an opening there in the top. It's kinda hard for you to see that. Let's see if we can, right. Let's put some light on that. Can you see that? There's a little opening. Mine is an end threader, not a side threader, right? So I'm gonna tighten this knot about a half inch away from the quilt sandwich and make sure it's secure. I want some space. Don't tighten it all the way down to the fabric or you can't pull it through. You need some room. So put a little tension on that and get that right on there. Your self-threading needle should move readily. I'll bring it up a little bit so we can see it better. So I'm gonna try to hold this thread out of my way. And I'm gonna put that needle right where I left off stitching. And I'll wiggle it through only the top and the batting. And I'm gonna try to go as far as I can. And I'll pull it through. And the knot is right there. And I'm gonna pop that knot through just by wiggling it. Now I can get the rest of this thread through. if it popped that through or not. It's a little bit tricky, I think. There we go. Oh, it was really tough. Okay, but that's what you're gonna get. If you can pop that knot through there, now the knot is trapped in the batting. It's totally secure. It can't backslide because it's in the batting. It's not just under the top layer. I've woven it through the batting too. Now I can cut that off. When you cut it, I recommend cinch it up a little bit with your fingers, just kind of pinch it like this and pull it tight. Now I don't have to cut it too close, I can just cut it normal. And then once I open it, the thread will retract and then I have a super clean little bit right there. There's no double stitching, nobody will see when we start the next one that anything was there before. And I would do that for both of those because that'll help really give you that clean look on that first part right there and it'll help secure that. So let's make sure our needle's right where we want it. Picking up that bobbin thread. And then we'll start. So we were in the middle and we're gonna do the exact same thing now on this other side. So Mary, does that seem like too much work? It's only the first row. And plus I'm talking a lot. I could probably sew it a lot faster if I wasn't talking so much. All right, so hug, 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 down into the valley. Make sure you're aligned. Get to your mountain. Hug, hug, hug. 
and come all the way down. Two hands controlling. And then we'll do that last piece. And again, we're the same distance outside the boundary that we were on the other side, right? So we don't have to worry, right? So here, the challenge that we're gonna face on this bottom one is we have to move up, right? Because we didn't sew all the way to the very center. So at this point, we're going to have to move up a little bit in the boundary somehow. And what we wanna do is get this seated in the offset so that this is lined right up in the proper space. So I'm gonna sew up a little bit and estimate and stick him back on there and see how we're doing. So he needs to go right in the middle and this line needs to line up right on the top. So we still need to go maybe about another half of a uh, quarter of an inch, I think. So that's about four or five stitches to me. Okay, so now I've got him lined up right in the middle. And now I want to make this touch. So I'll make sure that the foot is touching and we'll sew this first one. Now that the first row is set, we don't have to worry about trying to do that for every row. It's only the first row that we get this weird kind of a partial thing. So now we can just sew all the way across the rest of the row until we get to the other side and then we'll be perfectly centered. So again, using this center line lined up at the top and then we'll just sew along. And you can see right here, we're lined right up in the center and we're lined up right along there. So now our, our clamshell for this particular space is going to be perfectly centered right on the space that we have available. And this will work for any size. You just have to mark the middle and you will be fine. Okay, and so now we have this one that we can use as a center mark, right? So here we can go to the boundary and we can come back and we can put the partial in this way. It's just like we said, you know, we're outside the boundary, so we'll just go to the boundary and come back and we'll be ready for the entire next side of the design and everything is perfectly spaced and perfectly centered. Okay, so let's show you a couple variations and then I think we'll be done. So let me cut that and you can see, doesn't that look great? Here, let me tack it off, I'll show you. I, I did micro tack that, but. Let me cut this off. It still looks really clean, even though I cut the thread right there. So it looks good. So nobody's gonna know that you had, you know, two different areas right there that you did. But you can see that overall the design is perfectly spaced by doing that. So that type of split is also very useful for virtually any kind of border that you're going to do. If you can split the border and work from the center out, you're going to get a lot of precision, amazing precision if you do it that way. Okay, so let's play with something else. We're going to do two embellishments. And let's see, I think I need a three and a four. So one of my favorite designs that I love to see in feathers, um, in clamshells, is feathers. So I'll give you a little orientation really fast for how it looks. Let's see where it is. It's not on this one. It must be on this one. Okay. Woo, here we go. Doesn't that look so cool? We're doing that. You can do it. It's not hard. You'd be surprised how much easier it is than you think. Okay, because this one's wonky, I think it's hard to do the wonky one. So if that were the case, if this was the wonky one, what I would do is I would draw in the full clamshell right here. I'll show you. 
we'll just do it because we can. So I would put the, the um, template up and I would actually trace it with my stitching line discs and I would finish it out, right? So that I know where I need to position. So then I would just sew the part that is in the boundary, right? And that's what we're gonna do. But we'll show you one here so you can kind of get the idea and then if we need to, we'll come back and finish this one. So we'll start right here. This is continuous. It's designed to be continuous so you don't have to cut it. You don't have to make it continuous. You can make them separate if you don't want them to continue. Like we're gonna make a little line that connects them, but if you don't wanna connect them, that's okay too, you don't have to. So right there, we're in the apex right there, the little V for each one. So the first one I wanna do, let's put this on and we're gonna go that way. And let me see if we can get you in a little closer because I want, I want you to see how I'm gonna line it up. And you can line it up different ways. It's, it's some random rules, okay? Random rules means that you are making a choice to put it in some repeatable fashion so that you can do it each time the same, right? And so you make that rule, nobody else makes it for you. So I like to kind of be right at the, right above the nose, there's like a little bump right there. So I'm gonna be inside the bump. And right here, I wanna be able to sew in and touch that line, but I don't want the feather to cross that. So if I need to tilt it this way or that way to get it, Right here, I'm gonna line it up on the clamshell and right there, I want a quarter inch. So I want that space so that I can touch it. Let me get my spacing gauge. I haven't found my lanyard one. He's, he's AWOL, we haven't found him. All right, so here, I wanna be able to come back in and touch. So if I need to push him down a little bit, I'm gonna do that. So we'll sew this one. around until we touch and we'll come all the way back and that'll make this one double stitched and then we'll get our next one so I'm using the three and the four you should feel free to play with whatever you want okay and what I'm gonna do here is the limit is I'm gonna make this touch the uh, top of the clamshell so it'll sew a quarter inch in and I just want it to be able to touch the other um, part of the feather right there. So touch, and I'm gonna come back to this center of the lobe right there. And then what I wanna do is I want that connector line. I want something that gets me over to my next clamshell. And I wanna make it round. I wanna make it curvy, so I'm gonna use this half circle and I'm gonna use my spacing gauge to get me right to the corner. And what that does is it gives me a smooth transition line. It gets me right where I want to be for my next one. I take this off and then I use the same rule. And let's, let's show you what it looks like. Isn't that so pretty, you guys? Love it, and you get a nice curve, it's not wonky. It's okay if they're not exactly the same, they're gonna be approximately the same. So don't worry too much about if they're exact. Remember that this is art, okay? This is you making some fun art form, okay? So you don't have to have it be ultra perfect. So let's make sure I'm touching. I have to make sure that the ruler is touching on the top because I'm gonna sew this way. So don't try to touch on the bottom. Make sure that you're touching on the top of the feather right now. So we'll do the same one, come all the way back until we touch and come around. That way we start at the same place, slide that off and just get your other one. And we're making him stretch so that he's touching the clamshell. We can adjust a little bit if we want to, it's up to you. You're positioning that visually yourself. So we're gonna come back to the middle. You can even mark that with a little ruler sticker if you want. And then I'm gonna flip this down so that I'm using this curvature, the top part right here, and I'll use my spacing gauge. And if you're really, if you've got a super good calibrated quarter inch eyeball, you can do that too, it's fine. 
Okay, so we'll do one or two more. And we'll just kind of do them a little faster so you can see what it is without so much talking. I know, I like to talk, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, let's see, we better adjust because we can't touch the bottom there. There we go. We would never have touched the bottom and we would have had like a floaty, a floaty feather. Okay, and then just slide that out of the way and get your other one right on there. We're touching right here at the top, and as long as we can come in, then we'll just make sure that he's touching that next one. So tap to the middle right there, and then just use this bottom and get yourself right in to the bottom of your clamshell. All right, I'm gonna tack it off, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then I have one more embellishment idea for you, and then we'll be done. Are you, is your brain tired? I'm going to see if we have any, any questions real quick. Uh, maybe you don't have the feathers, but other rulers from Westerly. Yeah, the feathers, to me, I remember the first time I got them and I was with a friend. She's like, I'm not buying those because they only make these straight feathers and they're not that versatile and I don't like them. And I was like, oh, I don't think so. And I took that as a personal challenge and I made this amazing feather sample and I was hooked. That's it. I mean, I think her feathers are, they're luscious, they're fat and juicy, they're round and they're so versatile. They can do so many amazing things. Um... I can do feathers freehand, Carrie Delaney, but a lot of people can't. And I will tell you that the way that I learned how to do it is I sewed the template a billion times and I got the rhythm and I got the motion and I got the flow. And it really did um, act as a training wheel to allow me to create the items that I wanted to create that I initially could not do. Here's the thing. People say practice, practice, practice. But if you practice poorly, or you don't practice what you want to accomplish, then you're not going to get that end result. So I like perfect practice. And I know that sounds kind of like ridiculous, but you know, you want to get coached to be closer to where you are. So the tools that you use or the, like, you know, if you have a picture of some feather that you like and you can trace that a bunch of times, instead of just free handing practicing, I was never able to move myself towards the feathers I wanted without looking at a feather that was the one that I wanted and tracing that or using the rulers that gave you that really clean line. So, you know, obviously if people can do it and they don't need a ruler, then that's not who our audience is. I mean, there are people out there with that skill, but what we're trying to do is elevate the skills of those people who feel like it is a big challenge to be able to make the designs that they want. We're creating accessibility of some of these amazing designs for people. And, and so, you know, I, I, it's not that, you know, we can do it freehand, but if you can, great. If you can't, we're here for you. We wanna help you be able to do it better. Okay, so let's see. So Susan, that was the question. You've seen my freehand feathers, right? But I, I started with the Wesley feathers. They got me there. <laughs> I guess there's some discussion I was missing here. Okay. All right. Well, let me show you one more embellishment. I did not mean that as a diatribe. I kind of came across a little harsh, I think. That was not my intention. But I, I do think that, you know, it's important that we, we recognize that people have different skill levels. And I don't think that my skill level matches everyone. I, I, what I'm trying to do is help show something that's at each level. So, you know, if you're not at this feather level, if this, is, this seems like it's too complicated, that's okay. You can just start with the basic clamshell and work from there. I didn't do this the first time I picked up a Wesley template. I mean, I've been working with these for a long time. I had to learn just like everybody else. It was a new skill. I wasn't instantly successful, you know, it's not, it wasn't like lightning struck me and there I go. I, I learned it and I got better and I, it, it connected with me really well. So that made it easier because it made sense to me. Like the, just the way that they are designed, the way Leone thinks seemed very practical to me. So I didn't have a lot of challenges learning her, her technique. I want to show you one more and I think we'll do it down in this space. And 
Let me grab my tool, one and two. So I have shown before, I've shown my um, jump stitch method, and so we're gonna review that because this, I think, works well um, for that. And we're gonna do two different options. And I think that this is hard to do on the bottom, like if you have a flat clamshell on the bottom like that, this design might be hard because you kinda have to put half of it in. We're gonna use this and we're gonna put an embellishment right in here. So sometimes just for ease and convenience, I just skip the first row and just let that do whatever it wants to. So let's go ahead and we'll start here and show you a couple different options that you have. And this is not an exhaustive option. I mean, you have so many choices. I'm just showing you a couple of options that you have. All right, let's get our ruler up first. Oh, you guys, I put some grips on, but apparently not this one. I'm just gonna go with it because I don't want you guys to have to wait around. But put your grips on because they're so awesome, you definitely want them on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and seat my needle so it's not moving around. And I'm using, this is the Spin Effects number 14 at three and a half. Many different Spin Effects can do this. The key that you want is you don't want your design to be bigger than this. So if this is a three inch clamshell, from the base here to the top is also three inches because this is the half of the clamshell and if you did the rest of the circle, this is the bottom right here. So this height is the same height as this base, right? There's your plus right there. So that's how you can figure out what size would fit in this space. So this is a three and a half inch. And remember that whenever we talk about spin effects, if it says three and a half, that means if you did it twice. So this is half of that, which is one and a half and one and three quarters. So this is one and three quarters right there, which will definitely fit in this space. Oh, dreaded math. I did it. I did it on the fly. My husband will be so proud of me. <laughs> I joke about it, but you know, math, I remember he could add numbers in his head, long columns of numbers, and I'd be like, I need a piece of paper. I can't do it in my head. Okay, so let me show you the alignment as we get going. We've already got our initial position. Right here, we have this center marking line. Let's bring you down just a little. Let's come out so we can get a better view. Because the clamshells have a lot of great alignment, it's really easy to use a spin effects like this. I've got this center mark can line up right there and I can put in a really cute embellishment in between. And it'll, it'll kind of go around other, you know, the other clamshells. So go around the corner, get right back there. Now I need to do some tacking. So I'm gonna do some tacking stitches right there. Now I'm gonna go that way. So I'll just pick up my needle and release my foot, scoot over to the next one, drop my needle right in position, right at the base. And if this um, is in my way, you may cut that. Um, I would maybe do a few stitches first, like kind of secure it before you cut it. So just take a few tacking stitches right there and then maybe cut that, because we don't want to sew over that. If he's within that quarter inch, you can just leave him alone. So on this template, right as you go around that outside curve, just kind of go slowly right there. Then you can pick up some speed. Go around the corner and get right back there, and then tack him off, some little tacking stitches, and that's okay. That means we're just gonna have a little more visible activity right at the apex right there of this design. And then we'll just do one more after we tack it. Just pick your needle up, drag it over to here, set your needle in position right there, and then line it up right on the center line and go ahead and stitch it out. Slowly right around that outer curve right there, then you can pick up speed. And then right there, just slowly around the corner, and just put a few tacking stitches right there. And then you can just travel along. And usually you, I, I recommend maybe doing two rows at once if you're doing this. I'll show you what I mean by two rows. Oh, 
Okay, let's get that out of there. And then I'll show you one more thing. I got one more idea for you. And then we'll be done. All right, so here you have to cut the bottom thread also. Don't forget that. You'll have to go back and clip all those on the bottom. But it's going to look awesome. So let me flip it around so you can see what it looks like. Isn't that awesome? Love it. It's so fun and not hard, you know, you're going to get a little extra stitching in here. So those little tacking stitches just disappear into the fabric of whatever. And, you know, if you wanted to fill right there, those little spaces right there, that would kind of punch those down and just create a little change. And I just love it. That's just such a fun little embellishment that just really changes the design and gives a little bit more detail. And if you have this same, you could even echo this. If you have the spin effects number 14 sets, you could take the bigger one and line it up and just put an echo in there too. And that would be cool also. So endless variety. Okay, one last thing and then we'll be done. I know, I keep saying that, right? So we'll just do one. We'll do one last embellishment right here. And this one is with the curly Q. And I wanna just show you, I think this would be great as an embellishment, but there's one caveat that you wanna watch out for. So let's tack stitch that in so it's secure right there. So this is my cute little curly Q. So we'll just set the foot in there and he kinda of sits right in there. And this is mostly a straight line right here. There's, there's no depth to this, it's a single stitch and then you're gonna curve around and we'll just come back. And we would use this and travel the same way that we just showed you. So if you were doing multiples, you could jump stitch it. You could always travel also, but then most of us don't wanna freehand that. I, I don't either. So that's why I like that jump stitch method. The one thing that you wanna watch out for with this one is I don't wanna sew into this clamshell. I want to turn this, not centered, but enough that he's gonna touch right there on the stitch line and not go into the other clamshell. So this is where that spacing gauge is gonna be super helpful. So I'm gonna line him up right on this side, right there. Well, let's see, we're gonna have to adjust. Maybe we'll take two stitches up because I don't wanna be that far down. One, two, there we go then we don't have to go as far. So now we shouldn't be stitching and just put that little curvy in there. Okay, and then we'll take that out and I can just make sure he's tacked in. And I'll just cut it because we're done. Now we have many different sizes right here for this guy. Um, you can see that when he stitches out, he kind of curves out. We could use a longer one and we could just start up here. Like we could use a longer curly Q and then we can shift the height and you could just put a little marker of where you're gonna line up your needle. So you don't have to worry about this curvature. You could actually start above it and just use a longer curly Q because I have these in many different sizes. And this would be such a cute embellishment to put in there and see if we did it longer, you could potentially even get it kind of in the center so that he's a little offset, but if you wanted to have him centered, you could do that. So it's just up to you, or you can even do one opposite and make one go this way. So if you have the different sizes, here I'll show you what I mean. We could do the other one and he could go like this and he could curve longer like that. So that could be a fun, idea for you if you have those templates. So just some more ideas. Don't feel like you're limited. Every template that you has, have can be used in more than one way. So just so many options. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna just scan through here. Oh, let's see. Did you guys have fun today? I hope that it will be easy for you too, but I also recognize that it might be some challenges, but that's okay, it's okay to play with it and you'll be able to, my really useful boxes. <laughs> so Erica um, Rising, Rising, I'm not, hopefully I didn't mess up your name. Um, really useful boxes. So the ones that I marked on here are six inches and that's because a two inch, a one and a half inch and the three inch all fit in that 
uh, configuration. But I also recognize that your quilt may not have that size. It's okay, you don't have to have that, but that's just useful for training as far as today. Um, let's see. I love hearts with the feather template. Marty, I'm, I'm teaching that this coming week. Looks awesome. This one is a free class. This is my regular uh, Sunday broadcast, so. Oh, Peggy, I agree with you. I feel like the feather, I really feel like they were my training wheels to help me do the feathers that I wanted to. All right, well, I hope that you will just get in there. Don't be afraid. What's the worst? Okay, here, I'm just gonna put one little comment in there. Let's bring my foot down. Here's something I hear sometimes in the chat, right? People will say, if you use the wrong template, your ruler is gonna go underneath your foot and you're gonna mess up your machine and your, your sewing life, that's it. You're just gonna ruin everything. On a domestic sewing machine, the chances of your ruler going under the foot, if your foot is correctly positioned, is virtually nil right even if i use my skinniest ruler it's not gonna go under there that foot is so low i can't even fit my scissors under there your ruler's not going to go under there the one thing that you want to watch out for is i physically look at my foot and i position my ruler against it because this can happen i'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see this so you can see what might happen I have seen this, I have done this, right? And then the ruler's not moving, it's nice and sturdy, but you are in your sewing area. So the way that you prevent that is visually, you put the ruler against the foot. And when I sew, I look there every time. And that is training, right? We all, you know, if you've sewn for any length of time, you know, you sew with the presser foot down, right? And you only make that mistake one or two times and then you don't do that anymore. You make sure it's down. It's the same thing here. You're visually checking that alignment to make sure that the ruler is touching. That's why I think that ruler work is a very conscious skill. If you're tired, if you're angry, if you're distracted, it's probably not the best day for you to do ruler work on that day. It does take attention. And don't do it for five hours at a stretch, right? Take a break, look at the sky, walk around, get a drink, stretch. That will help you with that visual um, piece of it because your eyes are gonna get tired of looking, right? You've gotta look away and stretch and relax your neck muscles and your arm muscles. And keep your hand down. None of this. I don't want to see anybody like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get that down. Okay. All right, guys. That's it. I'm done. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I am so thankful for all of you. It's really been great to be able to share this passion that we all have and make COVID, you know, more communal. It's, it is a very lonely time. You know, I don't have a lot of close friends that I have the ability to go over to their house. It's all, you know, calls and, and remote. And it's been great getting to meet so many of you. And I look forward to us getting to, to be together at some point, you know, meeting up at shows and things like that again. So have a wonderful quilting day. Next week, I'm going to show you more clamshells but different. So here's a little example, a little sample. This is freehand and clamshell mix, but these are different. See how tall they are? And then we have the squat ones right there. Look at how they're like skinny, they're flatter. So we actually have several different clamshells. And what I thought we would do is we'll play with some of those so you can see what other options you have in the Westerly line. Like if you're a modern girl or guy and you just want something that's not quite so classic-y classic, then we have some other options for you. So have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>